America takes to the skyways. Across millions of miles each year, commercial airlines wing passengers, mail and express. Science has made flying safe and airports dot the land from coast to coast. Flying has captured the nation's fancy, and the time may come when piloting an airplane will be as common as driving an automobile. Thousands of people today own and fly private planes. Some fly for pleasure. And it shouldn't be lonesome either in such charming company. American business is taking to the air. Executives and salesmen are using airplanes in their jobs. They are working in comfortable flying offices a mile above the earth between calls in widely separated cities. Customers, branch offices, factories, once days of traveling time away, now by air, are only a few hours apart. Boys who build and fly model planes today will become the aeronautical engineers and designers of tomorrow. Or they may grow up to join that select group the airline pilots, the best of civilian flyers. They keep in top physical condition to pass the examination they must take at least every three months. Good health is also important to the airline stewardess, who is chosen from the nation's finest girls. Physical fitness is the first requirement for everyone who flies. If you're not convinced of this, just drop in at the primary training detachment of the United States Army Air Corps. Here, part of the training is given the men who fly for Uncle Sam. Flying cadets, they're called. They are selected with the utmost care. To find out how important the United States government regards health, just pay close attention to the physical examination which must be passed by these men before the Air Corps accepts them. Is my vision normal? Yes, I found it to be perfect. Now this instrument will measure the power of your external eye muscles. They must act perfectly for you to qualify. We will give you the depth perception test now. What does this test show? Well, it will demonstrate your ability to judge depth and distances. A good example in flying would be a forced landing with trees presenting themselves. All right, we'll go on with the test. I want you to pull the strings until you think these posts are lined up. Doctor, isn't this examination for the Air Corps a pretty tough one? Yes, it is tough. A flyer in the Army or Navy has to be just about perfect physically. Eyesight, hearing, teeth, heart and lungs. Healthy nerves and good coordination are also important. But I think you'll make the grade all right. Open wide. Sorry, my boy, but you can't be accepted with teeth as defective as yours are. But what can I do about my teeth? Well, first I'd say you should see your dentist and have your teeth taken care of. Well, I haven't seen him for quite a while. Another thing. I think he'll tell you that you should be a little more careful about what you eat. Good food, including milk, is important to teeth and to all parts of the body. You may go now. Tough luck, fellow. Better health next time. These men passed the test with flying colors. And we may be sure, with thousands of men like these in training, that our country is in good hands. They are among the best in the land. Flying cadets now, before long they'll be officers and pilots in the Army Air Corps. Every one of them is outstanding mentally and physically. They have the qualities which are important to Americans everywhere. Never before in history has the health of the American people their vigor and alertness in their everyday jobs been as important as now. 
In offices, men and women must have the vitality to perform important duties capably and accurately. Executives must have reserve stamina to accept new responsibilities without faltering under the burden. In thousands of plants and factories, the men who make and assemble the machinery which is essential to our nation must have strength, endurance, and the skill that calls for steady nerves. The health of a nation's people depends largely upon the food they eat, and especially vital to America is the health of youth, the citizens and leaders of tomorrow's world. These students at Northwestern University are taking ground school work in aviation. They study the principles of flight, meteorology, and navigation under the supervision of the Civil Aeronautics Authority, better known as the CAA. Among the best on the campus, they've been selected for physical fitness and mental alertness, qualities both for which good health is essential. They're typical of thousands of young people throughout the country, both in and out of college, who are taking advantage of this opportunity to learn to fly. Principles learned in class are put to actual practice in flight training, which is also under supervision of the CAA. Some of the CAA students may go into the Army Air Corps, some into the Naval Air Service, and others into civil aviation. Here's a new student about to go up for the first time. He may be a little tense at first, but he'll soon relax. Perfect coordination of hands and feet on the controls requires steady nerves and smooth muscular control, among the first things every flyer must develop. Here's one of the few women in America qualified as a flight instructor, Dorothy Ring, who can tell us about opportunities in aviation for women. Many girls today are learning to fly because it's a real thrill and lots of fun. But there's really no established place for them in flying. They practically have to make their own place. That's what I had to do. Are you ready for me, Dorothy? Oh, I'm sorry, but here comes a student of mine who I have to take up. Glad to have seen you. Glad to have seen you, Dorothy Ring. And now let's hop over to the Army Air Corps again. Must be time for dinner. Let's step out into the kitchen and see what's going on there. It's a kitchen so clean and shining that any housewife might be proud of it. And it seems the chef knows a secret that every good cook puts into use. He uses plenty of milk and butter in his cooking. The Flying Cadet's meals, as you can see, provide generous amounts of protective foods, vegetables, fruits, eggs, and dairy products, foods that help maintain health and vitality. Flying in the open air brings these cadets to the table with hearty appetites. They know that an appetizing meal is waiting. For the stout-hearted eagles who fly for Uncle Sam are the best-fed pilots in the world. The food experts who plan the cadets' meals wisely see to it that they get enough protective foods, including plenty of milk, butter, cheese, and ice cream, and in addition, whatever they want of other things to eat. This seems to be a rule these lads approve very heartily, and from all appearances, a good thought for anyone to follow. No wonder the flying cadets are among the finest specimens of virile manhood in the armed forces of the nation. And they seem to be enjoying life in the Air Corps. The folks back home can be justly proud of them. Ah, here he is. He passed his physical examination all right, and he's a flying cadet now, earning his silver wings in the Air Corps. Only yesterday, he wrote a letter to his mother. You know, Bill seems to be getting along fine, according to his letter. The meals here are great. They taste almost as good as your cooking at home, Mom. <laughs> you do give us good meals, Mother. You sure do, Mom. If you didn't, I wouldn't have made my football letter this year. Oh, a person would think nobody ever made a football letter before. Well, not many fellows do when they're sophomores. All right, all right. 
You all seem to have plenty of pep, so I'm happy. I'll just keep on giving you good meals, and we'll all stay healthy. We don't have to march like the infantry, ride like the cavalry, shoot like artillery. We don't have to work like the engineers. We're in the Air Corps now. We're in the Air Corps now. We're in the Air Corps now. We don't have to march like the infantry, ride like the cavalry, shoot like artillery. We don't have to work like the engineers. We're in the Air Corps now. We're in the Air Corps now. We're in the Air Corps now. We don't have to march like the infantry, ride like the cavalry, shoot like artillery. We don't have to work like the engineers. We're in the Air Corps. America is learning to fly, destined to develop a heritage of greatness in the air as we have on land and sea. Our democracy looks to her sons and her daughters to carry on in the tradition of her pioneers. In the world today, only the healthy are strong, and never before has the health of the American people been as vital to the nation's welfare. Whether or not we learn to fly, it's up to you and to me in our everyday jobs. And it's up to every American to stay mentally alert, to keep physically fit, that our nation and the principles for which it stands shall endure. <laughs>